morning, everyone. Right now I'm here in Alabang and I'm in front of the office of Star 8. You might wonder, what are you doing here? Well, today I'm actually going to see a flying car. Uh, you'll understand what that means later, but for now I just wanted to show you some of their e-vehicles. Uh, I've shown them in previous videos. They have EV, they have e-jeepneys, they have e-buses, they have e-trikes. They really have a lot of different vehicles. Uh, I should be riding one of these today. We're going to Santa Thomas in Batangas. Uh, this is, of course, part of the PUV modernization program. It's not just Euro 4, Euro 5 diesel jeepneys, it's also electric. Uh, these are perfect for areas like Metro Manila and other congested cities. Not quite so ideal for places that have steep inclines like Baguio. Yes, they can work there, but they're more suited for a flatter and more congested areas. Look at this, an e-delivery bike. Imagine if you saw your local yellow cab riding around on this. How cool would that be? And although right now they're not being made in the Philippines, they will be very soon. Within the next few months, they're opening two plants here in the Philippines where they're going to make these vehicles locally. And I showed this in a previous video. This is their roofing option where you can literally replace your roof with this, which is a solar panel, but also a roof. Um, so instead of putting it on top of the roof, this is your roof. You can see another example here of a kind of tile. So if anyone watched Casey Neistat, this is the kind of thing you could see him riding around on. Oh. Maybe need a little bit of practice, but I like it. Here's an example of one of their units with aircon. Uh, you can see the aircon units on the back. And let me show you the solar panels that are on the roof because not only are they electric, but they're actually solar powered also. Now, it doesn't run purely from solar. They have batteries on board. The solar just extends the range. Uh, it helps with charging, especially if you're stuck in traffic. Imagine you're actually generating power at the same time. Uh, but you do also plug these into the wall. Um, that's where most of the charge comes from. Sorry, I'm standing on top of a gate right now so I can get to the roof. Uh, you also plug them into the wall and get power like that. So it's not just solar. If we take a look inside, you can see where the driver sits. If you're wondering what that noise is, it's the fan up here. All of the fans are individually switched, so I can turn it off like that. Uh, so of course, if you don't want to use the aircon, you can just open the windows, turn on the fans. That'll give you extra range because of course the aircon does consume electricity. Uh, but yeah, I've shown these in previous videos. These are really the future. Not all of the jeepneys under PUV modernization will be electric. Many of them will be Euro 4, Euro 5 diesel. They're still much more efficient than what's on the road right now. Much better emissions. But yeah, a lot of them will be electric. Something to remember is that under the PUV modernization program, there's going to be different classes of jeepneys. So for instance, the smaller jeepneys will be class 1 and they'll carry anywhere from say 9 to 13 passengers. Then you have class 2 which carry a bit more and depending on the road is which class you'll see. So on the smaller streets of Cabal, you'll see class 1. On somewhere like Commonwealth, you might see class 2. Uh, actually off the top of my head, I can't remember the exact classes and how many passengers and the size and so on. But basically there's different classes depending on the capacity of the road. And I'm guessing you've never seen one of these. This is a banker boat, but it's electric and it has solar on top. Uh, in fact, this is my first time seeing it. We just arrived here. It has the flexi solar on top. Uh, you can basically just stick these on. Uh, it looks like a normal flat roof, but that's actually solar panels. And then there should be an electric motor, I guess, at the back. So if we look at the back here, you can see inside. Let me see, there you go. You can see the electric motor with the speed controller on top. I think the charger also. So that's enclosed there so it won't get wet. And then at the back here is where the propeller comes out, although it doesn't have one connected at the moment. But yeah, a solar electric banker boat. Pretty cool. And in here is the flying car. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but basically it's like a big, big drone that can carry a human. It's quite incredible, really. So you can see it's got eight arms, two motors per arm, so a total of 16 propellers. It actually looks really cool. Now if you look at this here, you might think that's just a regular tricycle. Uh, electric, yeah, but it's just another tricycle. No, this is actually amphibian. This can go on land and water. I just watched a video of it in action. Can you imagine seeing this on Pasig River? You just pull up to the river and then go across. So if we look around, you can see you've got your standard wheels, but then at the back you've also got the output that propels you along the water. And I think it's fully sealed. I don't know exactly how it works. I don't know much about amphibious vehicles, to be honest, but I've seen videos of it in action. It's incredible. And it's not just an amphibious tricycle. This one here is also amphibious. He showed me a video of this in action also. I would really love to see this on the Pasig River. You've got the uh, solar panels on the top. And again, this will be sealed. And let's take a look at the back. It looks like a regular vehicle. Like You wouldn't be able to tell unless someone told you. Yeah, here you go. Here's the output that propels it along the water. 
pretty amazing. Over here is the pilot of the flying car or the flying drone. Um, actually, he's doing an interview right now. I should have done one with him also, but I was too busy talking to him like a regular person and interviewing him. Uh, he was explaining how they have redundancy. So like if one of the motor fails or two of the motors, if the battery has a problem, if the uh, computer inside has a problem. So it has certain redundancies. Uh, so you should be relatively safe, but still you're, you're flying. It's, a, it's really a flying vehicle. I just asked now if it's okay to play with the scooter. He said it is, so let's go for a little bit of a ride. I'm not sure if I'll be able to hold the camera at the same time. Yeah. It's faster than I expected. It's actually a very smooth ride. Some of them that I've tested out, they're a little bit hard to control. Uh, this one's pretty easy and it's very lightweight. You can see the kids are riding these scooters, but they haven't actually put the batteries in, so they're just pushing them. It's kind of funny, kind of cute. I guess it's going to be a meal here also. Ah, in fact, I've just spotted something that a lot of people have been asking about. Uh, let me go over there and show you. This is a food cart that also has solar panels. So it's electric driven. Uh, basically, you can drive it to any place, hopefully a legal location, not the middle of the road. Uh, and then you can start selling your food or ice cream that have different units, refrigerated or heated. And you have your solar panels on top to recharge your batteries. Uh, it's a very cool vehicle. A lot of people asked about this the last time they saw it. Uh, so yeah, here it is again. That would be nice to drive around. Actually, I want to drive all of these vehicles to tell you the truth. And uh, now it's time to transfer vehicle. I'm going to try this one here. So this is my cameraman here. Uh, he said that he's managing to keep up, so this one's also quite fast. I think it's time to swap vehicle. Let's try this one. I can tell you this one is no joke. Yours has a faster kick. Faster kick. Yeah. But top speed, I think it's the same, right? But your acceleration is faster. You got a faster acceleration. Let's try on the way back. I'll give you a head start. Alright. And go. You win. So they're about to have a blessing at the warehouse. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, they are going to be making these in the Philippines. Uh, certain vehicles at least in the PV modernization. So very, very good news. So right now we're in one of the Star 8 Cityline buses. Uh, ASEC Mark is here and we're going to ask him about the PV modernization as we drive around. What's nice with this uh, vehicle is it, it, this is already automatic. So the yeah. driver will have a, uh, an easy time driving around. If, imagine if you're driving for the whole day using manual. Uh, it takes a toll on your uh, health, it, it takes a toll on the driver, which for a very long time, no, we are already modernizing this since uh, for this PUV modernization, we are already requiring that the drivers are already salaried. Right. Because uh, we're saying it's the root cause of the the ills of the transport system in the Philippines. The, yeah, the, the boundary, boundary system. Right? Yes. Drivers are making sure that the, they get the most out of the time that the operator lends him the vehicle. So yeah. that's why 
some drivers are driving for 16 hours, yeah, like taxi hours drivers. Yes, also, yes. I've seen them fall asleep uh, signal yes. light because they're overworked and underpaid. Overworked, yes. The boundary system, it it just doesn't work, right? It's it's yeah. not fair on the drivers. It doesn't provide a good salary unless mm. they push themselves to yeah. really dangerous limits. And uh, what happens if uh, a driver gets his boundary? No, the driver gets home early, probably eight o'clock in the evening or seven o'clock in the evening. What happens is uh, the commuters suffer. Yeah, the they commuters. Don't have a ride. Yes, because you don't have a reliable ride. You don't know when the public transport service will stop. So that's uh, what we are saying that uh, first and foremost, foremost, you're given public transport franchise to operate a public transport. That is a public service. So first and foremost, before you operate uh, something, uh, your ID, your priority should be providing that public service. Right, because that's the thing. People talk about livelihood and it is very important. These men, some women, but mainly male drivers, mm. they're working so hard and they've struggled for so many years. So the livelihood is important. But like you say, it's a public transport, yes. it's public service. So at some point you have to say, is this working what we have right now? Mm. If it's not, we need to adjust. Mm. And one of the things with the PUV modernization is there will be some people who can't fit in. There will be some drivers who just cannot adjust or they're just not quite right. But there is Tesla, right? You have yes. coordination with Tesla to we, retrain them. In fact, uh, we have budget for uh, social support mitigating measures. For those who will not be accepted into the new system, we're providing them livelihood. Uh, we have already talks with Tesla, DTI for uh, more livelihood and even uh, Dole. Dole oh, okay. to, provide, to provide them, the, provide them uh, labor uh, opportunities, job opportunities. A lot of people really think the PUV modernization is just about replacing the vehicles, yeah. new vehicles and that's it. And then they say, you're not fixing the underlying problems. Like, let's talk about the competition on the roads right mm. now with the jeepneys. LTFRB set the fare. So, mm. There's no need for competition, right? It's e actually harming people, this unnecessary competition where they fight on the road yes. for e passengers. Exactly what uh, we learned in one of the routes, in, uh, for example, in Baguio. One jeepney operator complained, how can we afford this modern vehicle when in fact we're only earning 500 pesos a day? Yeah. I, I asked them, why such, uh, why such so low income? How many units are you running? In, uh, in the entire Baguio city, there they told me they are 500. 500 units. 500 units. That's why the the income of the drivers are that low because there's so much competition. Right. It's like a cutthroat competition almost. So and they fight. Go. They yeah. fight the customers on the road, and yes. it causes congestion. It causes, it causes traffic. It causes crashes. Road crashes. Crashes also. Yeah. So I'm glad that you're able to join today, uh, not just to see the new modernized vehicles, but also to talk about the system. I mean, right now, for instance, if you go out during the day, there's a lot of jeepneys on the road. They have two passengers, three passengers. Mm -hmm. They're just fighting each other. It's not yeah. efficient. If the, you have one there's or two no, There's no semblance of proper dispatching. There's no semblance of proper fleet management, not even maintenance, no, not even maintenance, which should be pri primary uh, if you run the transport business, you should be able to assure the safety of the passengers. How about loading and unloading? Because you know right now, everywhere is a loading and unloading spot. How is the PUV modernization going to handle that? If, if you are running a consolidated fleet, you will not care if you're really loaded or unloaded. Uh, if your uh, jeepney is uh, running on two passengers, three passengers, because you have proper fleet management. The earnings of the entire fleet goes to that corporation or cooperative. So there's shared income, you have shared expenses, you have shared uh, costing. Like so mechanics, you're going to share yes, your mechanics. Yes, there's yeah. an economy of scale, right? Economies of scale. So bottom line is, it will be financially viable. Yeah. And if I, if I have a cooperative and I'm in charge of a certain route, I'm not going to dispatch 20 jeepneys if I know we yes. only need five, right? Yes. It just doesn't make sense. Whereas right now you have how many operators all yes. on the same route? Because you have individual thinking. Individual drivers uh, has their own uh, individual thinking. Now, for PUV modernization, you have uh, dispatching on demand. You will only dispatch the number of vehicles based on a certain passenger demand. So in effect, uh, you're even helping decongest the major roads in our Philippines, in, our, in the country. 
you already have, I say you, there are already modernized jeepneys and modernized routes in Tacloban, right? Yes. That's one of the areas that was probably one of the leading, you know, original areas that was modernized. No? Yes, it was, it was launched in uh, Tacloban, I think, uh, early, uh, late last year. And uh, we have uh, received good feedbacks from uh, the people in Tacloban. Uh, some people are already saying uh, they can already be assured that their kids, their husbands, their wives can go home safe because there's a reliable public transport that can operate up to until uh, 10 p.m., 11 p.m. in the evening. So they when, know they're going to get yes, home. Yes, before there, there's only public transport uh, up to 6 or 7 because the drivers are individual. Once they hit their boundary. Yeah, yes, once they get it, their boundary, they, they go, go home. home. And now with this uh, fleet management system, you are assured that uh, you will have public transport all day long. One of the things I've seen in the media is they say, how about these single driver operators? They're a one-man band. And the problem is they, they can't manage. They can't maintain their vehicles because they're not earning enough. Right? They ha they, everything they earn goes straight. Yeah. It's, it's, what do they call it? Uh, hands uh, and mouth. Right? Yeah, unfortunately, it has been the practice ever since. But the law requires under the Public Service Act that uh, any public transport, for that matter, given authority by the state to operate a public transport service, given a franchise to operate public transport service, should not uh, treat uh, that way, should not operate that way. They should ensure financial capability of the operations. They are even required to submit financial statements annually. Annually? Annually, yeah. And actually, I spoke to some of the single driver operators in Marikina. They joined the Beat uh, co Cooperative with Yuri, and they mm. said they're earning more. Yeah. And they don't have to worry anymore. Like, how am I going to maintain my vehicle? How yes. am I going to pay registration? How am I going to do my franchise? They're earning more money. They have less stress. Yes. Okay, they don't own a jeepney anymore. But what benefit is it to own a vehicle that's mm. falling apart, that mm. you can't afford to maintain? Yeah. It's better just to have a stable job where you can feed mm. your family, you don't have to stress. So it's not like they're just going to disappear. They're just going to be absorbed into corporate. Exactly, exactly. I think that's what a lot of people don't understand. They're not yeah. going to be vanished. They're going to be absorbed into cooperatives. And if for some reason they can't fit, retrained. Like Tesla, yes. I've been talking to them. They said they're going to train them in welding. <laughs> they're going to help them find jobs. So uh, there are really alternatives here. Th there are even comments that uh, why not the government just run the uh, yeah. public transport? Yeah, it's very easy to say, but what we did here is an inclusive program. The existing drivers, the existing operators will be part of the program. It would be very easy for us to just disregard these existing operators, these existing drivers, and we'll just bid out a private yeah. sector operator to run the business. But we chose the more <laughs> difficult program, which is very inclusive, already comprehensive. We're That's providing them financing. We're providing them this uh, very uh, low financing program for them to really modernize. And another thing that you've been doing recently is the, uh, the fuel cards, right, for the jeepney drivers. Although uh, it's been a little bit slow so far, right? Yeah. But I'm happy to see, like last time I went to the event, they're really trying more to reach out. So yes. doing these like caravan events where they go out and meet yeah. the jeepney groups, uh, because it's good having programs, but you have to reach the people. And that's yeah. one of the most difficult things, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so, okay, thank you very much, AC yeah, Mark. Sure. Let's, uh, let's try to go a little bit faster and sure. see if we can turn <laughs> this over. <laughs> Can, you can apply for a driver. Yeah. You already done. I'm ready. I'll take you over there.